Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode 52 of our Let's Play series, Stalingrad to Berlin as the Soviets. In this episode, we're going to be starting off with turn 28 ground movement phases, and really just trying to be as aggressive as we can pushing against the Axis forces, as we've, in quite the sense, got them on the run now. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to do any sneak peeks to how the front line turned out because I think there's a couple surprises that will leave us cliffhangers that we'll just get to as we scroll through the front lines. You'll note that I'm already in the ground movement phase. Um, as we mentioned in the previous episodes, the weather conditions right now are mud on the ground and it's pretty consistent rain across the entire front. And that does continue for much of the front um, in the theater in the next turn as well. So we're going to have a couple turns here where we're just letting the air armies rest and recoup a little bit uh, so that way we can continue to use them in June and July in the, the heat of the summer um, and take advantage of them then. Starting up by Leningrad, we're actually going to begin by taking a look at the battle recap of their attack against uh, the defensive perimeter of Leningrad. Uh, this really caught us by surprise, and they really were able to muster some pretty strong forces. If memory serves correctly, they had a, something like 100 combat value attacking here. So let's take a look at those results. And you see, that, yeah, it was 75,000 men they committed to this attack against our 28,000. What is truly so impressive, though, is the damage that we did to the attacking Germans um, in this particular engagement. So you see... Here, not only are men and number of gun platforms about equal, which is pretty good for us, even though we were considerably outnumbered, look at the armor numbers. And when we're looking at our own forces, we see that the 46th Rifle Division had the 11th Guards Heavy Tank Regiments. That's going to be KV-1s. And when we see the battle results, we had 20 KV-1s, and we lost a total of 14 of them. The Axis player had 44 Stug 3Gs. They lost 25 of them. Now, on one hand, you could say, well, the heavy tanks, they're more valuable. Losing 14 of them, it's kind of like losing 20 or 30 even. But anytime we get anywhere even close to one-to-one -one odds on trading any armor as the Soviets, we are happy. We are so happy because the Germans will never be able to keep pace with our production capacity. And not only did we end up destroying 25, we damaged 17. Which means next turn, in effect, they only have the 7 that were disrupted left. So that, that's just some great news for us. We did get kicked out of that hex. We did lose the fortification level that we had built up there, etc., etc. Um, that is all true. But I, I think it was worth it for what we actually got out of the engagement. Now, what I am going to do is I'm actually going to move back into that hex to try to reestablish that defensive line. And we'll see here which units we want to bring back up. Probably the 46 rifle here. And I might actually take like this 134th Guards Rifle Division over. There we go. So that gets us up to 14. It's not a whole lot, but we're, we're kind of tempting them to come back. When we look at what's assigned, we've already got these tank brigades assigned. This rifle division has that 11th Guards heavy tank. We're actually going to return this to the HQ because we do know that it is now significantly weaker. And what we're going to do is attach this rifle brigade to the unit which should really bolster the numbers that we have there in that hex. And then here we have this separate tank battalion. And let's just see here. So they only have 13 T-34s that are ready. We're looking at the TOE. That is 90%, but we have some damage. It's probably going to be okay to just leave them as is. So now we look at it, we're at 16. Um, 
again, they, they would have to commit a little bit to really attack again, and I'm, I'm kind of optimistic about our odds if they do. So, not too worried about that. Back here we have this rifle division that I actually think will just move up. And what we're going to do this time is we're actually going to set these guys on reserve to potentially help with the defense if they do counterattack. Okay. Now for the rest of the Leningrad pocket, as usual, we're going to leave this be. Again, maybe you could say there's some opportunities here in some of these hexes, but we're, we're not going to pursue them because the goal is Riga and Peskov. And down here, they'd actually broken through in the previous turn, and we actually retreated in some areas to try to make sure we established a static front line, because the objective is not to push northward from here. It's to take Peskov and South Riga. And I mentioned some cliffhangers. Look at their retreat. They are leaving Peskov because they know they're not able to hold this line. So let's see now how quickly we can get some units up there towards Peskov. Okay, and already we're starting to run into some, it looks like what are probably going to be Panzer units. So we'll bring up some units to try to start building out a defensive front here. There we go. So we've got 11, 19. I'm trying to think if we want to move that far up. I think we do. There we go. So this is the 19th Panzer they have here. We're going to use some of this terrain now to our advantage, because here we have rough terrain, which is going to be very defensible. And I'm a little surprised that they've left this uh, for us to take. But, I mean, we're not going to complain about that now, are we? I think what we will also do is take one of these rifle divisions and actually withdraw them and instead bring up a rifle core into that hex. There we go. Can move up here. And I, I can't hold it in any longer. Look at what they did around Riga. Look, they continue to withdraw. They had tried to form this pocket and it failed, and they continue to withdraw. So actually, before we continue moving there, the priority is Riga. So let, let's just begin by seeing, hey, how, how far do we make it if we start advancing here? Not very far until we run into the first opposition, which is fine. Now this is really difficult because we've got these tank cores, which... If I remember from previous episodes, I actually said we'd probably let them rest a little bit as the infantry move up. Um, but we now find ourselves in a position where they're just letting us move forward. So we're going to bring up some of these infantry units. And again, really going to try to leverage the terrain to our benefit here, right? Rifle division can come down here. Because I don't necessarily want these tank cores being our perimeter defense, right? That makes sense. I, I don't want them being the ones that are defined, defending the front line. Let's take another rifle division up there. I'm actually going to have these guys attack. No? Maybe not. Maybe not. Their estimate's a little higher than I would have guessed just from the appearance of the unit. Okay, here we go. So let's take these two rifle corps and actually attack here. SS Panzer Grenadier Division was committed to the defense. That's really going to help them. And we did not manage to break through. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think we can move some of these guys up, though. I really want to get the infantry to be the front line here. 
now that we've got kind of this wall built, let's now take a look at seeing where we can break through. Let's give that a shot. So the Jaeger Division retreated. That was simple enough. Attempt it. Let, let's just... No, they have 30 apparently. That not quite sure how we know that. Let's move you here. You guys there. Ooh, what have I done? What have I done? Take you there. Actually, I'm just going to set you on refit. Both of you, I'm going to bring down here. Set you on reserve, hoping if they do counterattack, then I have enough to be able to defend myself with. Take this rifle core down here. Try to act as a bit of a deterrent. Also, bring down. So the rifle core that we've got. There we go. So maybe what we do is we attack the 14th Panzer. Let's do that. Nope, don't have enough. Very well. Here is a bit of a weak point. Let's try to bolster that if we can. Take this rifle core. Go. Now we're a little better defended there. Wondering if we have this mechanized core, if I can get them up here instead of the tank core. That's kind of my thought right now. Let's bring the tank core back, set them on reserve. We could either do that rifle division, this mechanized core. Let's do the mechanized core. And what I need to look at now is, let's get some support units here. These are all 4th Army, and 4th Army has next to nothing available. We will at the very least assign the anti-tank regiment here. It's something. Yeah, I don't think we can press it too much. Let's just be happy we've taken all of this territory, right? So now that we've kind of built out this forward line, I think we can start looking at bringing these units up, right? Again, I want to try to get some of these rifle divisions forward. Better to have them have this guy go here. Two rifle divisions there. Let's move them up. then you can also go there. I'm not sure why I did that rifle brigade up there. Let's see what we've got down here. Slightly weakened rifle division. Can't quite make it up there, can we? Although looking at it, really this wouldn't necessarily be the point they'd counterattack. Let's attack this second infantry division. Can't do that very well. Okay, so now we're gonna take these guys and start moving them up. That right division go there. 25 defensive value. Start bringing all of these forward here. Right division can kind of just hold that gap. I feel like I should bring. 
Okay, so this is all the 43rd Army, which we've been moving over. Let's bring them up here. To try to prevent them from just steamrolling through our line. And then you are also 43rd Army. Although it looks like you guys need to go into a refit status. We will move you up here. And then I'm actually going to take... There's another rifle division. Let's bring it right here. I'm going to move the 43rd Army HQ up to this point. And then we're going to set these two guys on refit because they are hurting. So is this rifle division. Thank goodness. Those are brigades, so that's okay. Yes, yeah, so now they can't just go straight south and try to cut us off or anything like that. I'm going to preemptively move up this rifle division to just kind of this little patch of forest again. A bit of a layer in case they do try something smart, like breaking through. Um, I say smart as in like a... A, a cheeky reference, if you will. Not necessarily that I find it an intelligent idea, but in case they try to break through here, cut our lines, etc. Uh, this artillery unit we're going to bring up here. These tank core. How are you guys doing? Yes, you're at 50%. Here at 50%, so both of you were going to ultimately put to refit probably on this hex that's forward. Here. Let's see how these guys are. They look like they're a little better off. Yeah, 100% medium tanks. And 100% medium tanks really is just the light tank destroyers that they have an issue with. So for both of these, I'm going to move them up here and set these guys on reserve to try to help against any type of counterattack. I think you can do the same, this 13th tank core. Yep, you can. So you can go up there to a reserve status. Now I can move up our HQ units. Okay, so this guy's starting to get a little split. So let's take these two units and move them up here. Got a number of situations like that, unfortunately. Up there. This guy. Here. So then all of you are in range if I move you up here. That's good. You folks are over here. I'll move you down. And we're just going to try to have you guys advance into these woods. sense. From an HQ perspective, only this one unit up here is out of range. That's good. Fourth Guards Army, you just need to be further forward. And Fourth Army is a very similar situation. Back here, Second Tank Army needs to come up, as does the Fifth Guards Tank Army. The third shock army can go up to here, with this unit being quite available to help out. Let's move you up to here, I think. We still have, yeah, third shock army elements over here. Let's bring you there. And 30th guard rifle corps. 
think I'm going to move them this direction, because really, I even bring them down here, I guess. 30, 24... Yeah, let's bring it down there. There we go. Move up the fifth army just a little bit. That's fair. These two motorized units. Let's try to get in behind them. Might cut off their supplies. Like here, we captured a depot. You know, the worst thing that happens there is that a motorized battalion right is forced to retreat. But now they're going to try to stop our breakout. And then these rifle divisions and other elements of the 4th Shock Army, we will have them move up here. This rifle division is just unready. I don't know what I've got you doing up there in that situation. Same thing here. Does this entire army need to go into refit status? It kind of looks like it, doesn't it? It's a little disappointing. You guys up just to provide some cover. I'm going to take that HQ unit all the way up to here. This isn't really going to be a focal point to my attack right here, right? So that's why I'm a little carefree about their positioning. I can bring up this HQ a little bit. And one more. I'll leave them there. Oh, you're really spread out, aren't you? I have to bring you there. You can just do a general advance. Although I want you to head this way, apparently. There we go. Uh, this is the Kalin in front, which is fine. First tank army. You can move up. Air army and the Volkov front, you're all fine sitting back there. Good. Good, this is starting to look really good. See if I've missed anyone. Yeah, there are a couple units here I haven't quite gotten to. Let's, um, let's be a little funny here. Let's actually move up into this rough terrain. So that one rifle division now has a defensive combat value of 24, really because of the terrain that it finds itself in. And then here I'm wondering if I don't take this mechanized core and try to have them get in behind their lines again. It just puts us at a bit of risk, though, of being encircled with that particular unit. I don't know, though. Like, being able to cut off this rail line is pretty intriguing to me. You know what? Let's move you here. Defensive value of 9. I mean, that's nothing to laugh at. And let's just see how long they might be able to hold out there. I really don't know what the answer will be. And maybe we even take like this mechanized core, have them also come down with these two tank core. Again, nine. Right. So now it's not a simple encirclement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This rifle division can come up here. And then this mechanized core. We will also toss up here. Even further. And now we've broken this rail line that they have north south. I like it like it a lot. Okay. Wow, that's been fun, huh? Lots going on. Lots going on. So Peskov, again, is going to be nice to take it if we can, but
really the push towards Riga is just progressing so well. Once we've had those initial breakouts a couple of turns ago, everything has just really been going our way with this. It's a bit of a domino effect, right? Now here we've got a number of units that we're trying to move forward. So we'll keep them progressing from Rejev. I mean, these guys are just going to be some reinforcements for us as we have a wider line, right, that we can use to help defend. Back here we kind of have a similar situation with some of these rifle cores that we've brought in. Um, but we're not going to jump to those quite yet, I don't think, because first, let's keep moving down the line in this order. And they've done, for the most part, a bit of a retreat, but down here they're actually starting to fortify, which I think is representative of their desire to defend Minsk. Right? We are getting dangerously close, in their eyes, to, to this spearhead breaking through to Minsk. What we have to be careful about now is they've actually managed to organize a defense faster than we've been able to bring up our attacking forces. And right now, in the next turn or two, this Axis player, I, I've i seen similar enough things so far that I would have confidence this Axis player would be able to figure out how to get in behind, what is this, the 20th Army that we have down here? Get in behind the 20th Army and encircle the entire army. I don't think that's that far from the realm of possibility, given what they have here. I mean, you have a full-strength 9th Panzer, You've got multiple infantry divisions at full strength. Yeah, this, this right here is um, four full strength infantry divisions, five, six, seven. That's, that's crazy. But let's take a look at the units we've encircled. Um, and I think what we're going to do is actually press an attack. And I think I might move this rifle division here. And let's now take all of these units. We're just going to try to wear them down, right? Force them to expend supplies, ammunition, etc. Cost to us was 24 armor, 1600 men. That's not too bad. Um, and we'll keep doing that for a while. Back here, I think we'll move up some of these units to just continue building out this defensive front that we're trying to establish. This rifle division can go up there. I'm good in this hex, I think, because I have the terrain on my side here. Okay. 16, 6. We're defensible against what they have there to attack with. Now what we have to start doing is how do we get some of these rifle units that we have south here to start defending these hexes. So like here's a particular weak point I worry about where this guard's rifle division, it's not a bad unit, it's just not enough right now to be able to hold that part of the line. So maybe we bring down like this cavalry corps. Right, and that, that bolsters us up to 22. Much more respectable now. Here, I don't think we're going to advance because we have this fortification level and they're actually starting to amass enough for a counterattack. 36 is not bad. You are on reserve to help out with counterattacks. That's good, as are you. Let's take this rifle division and take up the space that we had just left unoccupied by moving that cavalry division. Here we just have a motorized and mechanized brigade. Which maybe we just move one of them to the hills. I think that might make some sense. Here we have three motorized brigades. Can I build you up to anything? Yeah. So we have too many mechanized core at the moment. That's the reason we can't. But I'm thinking, let's get you down south here. Right, to try to help defend that hex. Back here we have these two tank corps. I'm going to set both of them on reserve. 
now we need to start bringing down this rifle core. Bit of a journey. But really, as soon as possible, I want to get them down here to the southernmost tip that we're trying to defend. Because like this hex that only has defensive value of 4, I really worry about. You're also on reserve, so at least there's that. Maybe... Take like this rifle brigade down here, maybe. What if I take this rifle core? Oh, you you just moved there. You can't go any further. Let's actually first see what support units we might have available. There's not too much. But we are going to attach the anti-tank regiment because we do know that there are panzer elements in the south here. Here we're going to attach the 80th Tank Brigade. Yeah, it'll be interesting, I think. They might break through in this hex. If they do, I'm not too worried about it, because I don't see how they could also break through this tank core that we have here. Maybe I take them off reserve and move them forward to that hex to defend. Both light woods. I think I'm going to leave them there. I think I'd rather have the layer of defense than to move them all the way forward. Here it's kind of a similar thing. Okay. Do I bring that rifle brigade down? I think is the question. And I think we will. It, it doesn't do a whole lot, but at the very least it means as is, they don't even have two to one. And that's something. Let's also see if there's anything I can attach to you, but your brigade, I can't. Um, yeah. We'll see how that goes. This is a bit of a worry for me, but I think if we can just hold roughly the same pocket that we have um, in this turn, for one more turn, because we've got... Was it five rifle corps that are heading south? That's 100,000 men heading south here to continue pushing on Minsk. So I'm, I'm excited about those prospects. Looking here south of Smolensk, um, we're not going to go on the attack with any of these. Again, we want to build up some of a defensive perimeter. Here they do have that 3 to 1. But I've got these units in reserve, and I, I don't know they'd expend all of their energy just to push us back here. And if they don't, I'm hopeful we can get this to fortification level 1 in the next turn. Right here, I actually think I'm just going to push back against this element of the 330th Infantry Division. Yep, so they retreated. So now they don't even have a fortification level there. I'm debating if I move forward. I think I'm going to stay right where I'm at. Down here, one to one, if they did attack, that's fine. Similar situation over here is, although what we noted in the previous um, turn, turn 27, was that they started to retreat from this area. So we do have some opportunity to... Uh, holy crap. I'm going to jump ahead a little here. I did not see this. So remember that unit that went in behind our lines like a crazy person, and I said it was the first time I was really kind of disappointed with the AI and my 200-some-odd hour, hours so far of the game? Um, again, the AI has been fantastic. These comments I'm about to have do not reflect the general opinion I have of the AI. The AI is great, but it can make mistakes. AIs are tough. There's, there's no denying that, but... Looking here, it was really disappointing because they had taken some type of mechanized unit from this pocket, and they actually went all the way through our the rear of our lines trying to cut units off in the previous turn. And I thought maybe as like a motorized brigade or something like that, when in fact, it is the LAH SS Panzergrenadier Division, guys. 
that. And there's the Das Reich over there. That is just... It's really even more disappointing to see, honestly, because that is just one of the more premier units that that the Axis have at this point in the war. And they threw it away in such a fashion. It's just disappointing to see. I think I'm going to move up just a few of these units that didn't have enough movement points in the previous turn to just really try to reinforce the positions a little. And if we did take everything and attack this turn, we do have almost two to one, so we're going to do it to try to deplete their supplies. And they're surrounded. Yes, they managed to hold, but they're not going to hold for too much longer. Yeah, okay. And even if they break out of this pocket, I mean, there are more units waiting to stop them. Do like this unit can come back here because this is pretty important that we keep this tied down. I think we'll take like this rifle division back. Yeah. Maybe do another attack? Let's do it. Ooh, we got really close there. Really close. But now their supply situation is looking, looking grim. Okay. Let's actually take a look at the battle reports there. So I want to see what type of armor they had. So this is the first battle. Oh, they had tigers too. Okay, so they lost five Panzer IVs, four Panzer threes, and then they had some SP guns here that they lost. We are starting to lose some of the M3 Lees, the, the Lin least, uh, I guess you could call the M3 Lee a medium tank, or main tank for a while for the Allies, and the M3A1 Stuart, which is certainly a light tank. The second battle, did we get any Tigers? No, no Tigers. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'd rather fight the Tigers, though, when they don't have any fuel. So that's one way of looking at it. Oh, they were very effective, though. So in the second battle, they destroyed six units with AP hits at a range of 176. And in the previous battle, they were much less effective because they didn't really get, we didn't really get into their range. This is out at 600 um, in terms of range, so that's probably why. Okay, I got distracted by a shiny there. Yeah, that... It's disappointing to see. Again, it, any any AI can make a mistake. Um, and especially in a game this complex, I'm just not terribly surprised that that we did see something like that happen. Right? It, it's bound to happen. These things are not perfect. Um, but it's just it, the, the gravity of it is a little greater knowing that it was such a premier unit that they had at their disposal that was ultimately kind of tossed aside, frankly, is a way of saying it. I think we're going to take, like, this rifle core unit down here and this equivalent rifle division. We're going to try to break through this unit. And they managed to hold, which was unexpected. So then what I'm going to do is... Take this rifle division. And bring them over here, I think. Yeah, they worry a little bit about the Das Reich there, but I think it's going to end up being okay. I'm going to stay there where I have the fortification level. I'm going to move this unit up a little bit to try to get more in range. This HQ, I'm also going to move up to one. Oh, we'll go back. That's fine. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we're we're being a little conservative on this side because again, there's nothing. If we, if we had amazing success pushing south here and we capture ten hexes in the next turn, all we did was capture ten hexes of swamp and forest. And it's not in the direction of any strategic objective unless I have some 
visions of grandeur of making it all the way to Kiev from that point in the front line, which is not a realistic possibility. So this is actually the Western Front, which is fine. Here we have the Third Army. You desperately need to come up, and I'm assuming what happened was you probably found yourself retreated when um, the LAH SS Panzer Grenadier Division came through town. This rifle division, I'm actually going to move back now to the front line now that that threat has been dealt with in our rear. The question is where on the front line, really? Like down here. And what we're going to do is attack here. Oh, an infantry division was committed, so they're going to hold. Shoot. Okay, let's take these two and attack. So we route at that particular unit. What if we try again? Two to one. They retreat it. Good stuff. Now, if I take both of you and attack, that's 22 to 6. Let's do it. They retreat it. I have enough to go here. I don't. It's fine. It's fair. So let's, let's do this. Let's move you here. You can come down here. This tank division will move up. We're going to have all of you attack. 26 to 3. Retreat at them. This rifle division can move up. Rifle division plus the tank core can attack. They managed to hold with minimal fortifications and men. Interesting. Let's take you here. And both of you attack. That was successful. This infantry division now can come south. And we're going to put them right here. There we go. We need to relocate some of these HQs, though. Let's bring you there. Come up there. Okay. Very interesting. I think what I'm going to do is finish up the episode with some rail repairs. We won't do that in the next episode. Um, and then we'll probably close out here. So I have one here. Let's actually just do the shortcut control 9 to highlight where they are. Did I not? Do that successfully. Let's try it again. Control 9. There we go. So there is one. Here is another one. Did I have you on a train and I forgot about you? I worry that is what happened to you. Well, let's have you catch back up. So I can have you go. Where is a good rail yard to have you go to? Disembark. We're going to take the 3rd Air Army and just move them off that hex. Oh, shoot. I did. Gosh darn it. Had them move by a train. Go here. And then have you get off the train. Excellent. Now you can begin in this direction. Looking at the rail hexes, I want to finish connecting these three, and then I think I want this guy to head south, because we have a lot of work to do down here. 
So let's do that. Okay, so those are all taken care of. Now I need to get you over here. So have you come that way. Good stuff. Good stuff. Can I have another up here? Doesn't look like it. One, two. Aha! There we go. See, I felt like I was missing one. And indeed I was. Now, the question is what to do with you. I need to start getting some stuff flowing here through Smolensk, but I also want to connect. I think, well, hold on a minute. So that just goes to nowhere. Connecting that doesn't actually do a gosh darn thing for us. So maybe what I want to do is say this rifle division is going to come off that hex. This rail repair unit is going to go here. Curious if I have them go this way or south. See, the issue at hand is this guy's projecting his own control, which is making it really difficult. So I'm just going to go this way, repair you, repair you. So then I start to, to get over here, because then I can also actually connect back up in a bit of a loop here. And then I can come back down this way, I think, in the next turn. Okay. Yeah, so I think we're going to leave off... Um, right around our Yule guys, and then in the next episode we'll we'll finish up the ground movement phase, look at reserves, look at building units, look at our theater boxes, maybe look at leaders, I'm not quite sure. Um we'll see what we got for time and yeah there's some more some more stuff that's gonna catch your eye in the next episode, I think, as we look further south in the front and it should be pretty action packed in terms of what's going on in the episode. So as always guys, thanks so much for your support, your your continued um, watching of the series and the videos it, it really does mean a lot and I, I hope you're getting a lot from this it's such a fantastic game and, and as much as we can I feel we should try to, to spread the name of the game and and really help those who may be daunted by the, the project to, to get into it because although the scale is great and the mechanics are deep that does not mean it is insurmountable in terms of learning how to play the game so um, thank you all for, for being a fantastic community to support this game. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, or feedback, please toss them in the comments section below. Um, I actually am now back kind of caught up to recording, and I've seen there are some comments out there that I have not gotten to. I just haven't had time yet, but I, I will get to you as soon as I can. And yeah, with that stretch, gamers, as always, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.